This is one elevator pulley question that you must try before seeing the solution. Just try. Just, just you know, just try to do some stuff and see if you can get it. So you have a system where it's counterbalanced by heavy weight, and they're asking you what is the rate uh, that the motor provides energy to the system. When you see the keywords rate, energy, why did I cancel that out? Ah, highlight, yes. Rate and energy, you should think of power. Power, uh, rate of energy is power. So power of the motor. That is what you're trying to find. And they give you a bunch of equations. So <laughs> you see all this thing here? How are you going to find that? Well, let's stay calm and try to do some equations. So when you see diagrams like this, you must label your diagram with forces. If not, you'll be very confused. What are the forces happening? So let's label as much as we know. On the elevator, you're going to have the weight of the elevator, which is W equals to M1G. Then you have the other side, also a thing hanging there. That one also has a weight, which is M2G. Okay. Then the motor, right? So the motor is actually helping to pull the elevator up. So it exerts some, it's turning this way. Because you see the velocity on this side is going up. Velocity this side, things going down. So, I mean, the motor has to pull up the elevator. That's why it's turning that way. And it exerts some kind of force. Fm la, due to motor. So now we have to think of ways to solve this. There are actually two methods. One is using forces. The other one is using energy. I'll show you both. Make sure you know how to do both. Okay, because it's really helpful when you're trying to solve questions related to this. So let's see. We need to draw a free body diagram of this, one of the objects in this system. I'm going to pick the elevator. So let's start with that. So if this is your elevator box, M1, there's going to be some force pulling it up. What's pulling it up? The rope, the string, the tension. Okay, sure. Then you have some kind of force also downwards, which is weight. So let's label that weight. What is weight on this side? Just M1G. The other side is tension. But what causes the tension? What is pulling the string from the other side? So you kind of have to look at it and say, huh, so if I trace the string, the motor is pulling the string, but also on the other side, we have this force that is pulling the string as well. So the contributors to tension are actually two forces. The motor is causing tension. Also, the weight on the other side is causing tension also. So I'm going to put M2G. So well, this is how we can write out the forces. So this is a free body diagram of the this weight right here. Just one of it. Okay, now what do we do? What's the next step? Um, with this in mind, we can use Newton's second law already. So Newton's second law is going to be the net force equals to mass times acceleration. So let's write that out. Um, yeah, so Newton's second law, net force of on this object is the mass of it. Let's just put M1, sure. Times gravitational acceleration. So how do we proceed from here? The net force is going to be two of them. You kind of have to pick which one you want positive, which one you want to be negative. Um, let me say, I don't know, pick one to be, one direction to be positive, one to be negative. Let's say the other ones are negative. Okay, let's do that. Oops, I see a mistake. This is not M1G. Sorry about that. This is MA. Mm, okay, we don't know the acceleration, do we? Nah, we don't know that. Oh, wait, we do. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Lift is going up. When the elevator is rising at a steady speed. What does that mean? It means the acceleration is zero. So acceleration zero makes things so much easier. This is just zero. Okay, you are not speeding up. You're not slowing down. It's just zero. Zero. Bright orange, zero. So that means all the forces, you can just write it in this way. All the upwards forces equals to all the downwards forces because acceleration is zero. Very nice. So I'm going to say M1G equals to all the upwards forces, which is M2 plus M2G. There we go. And we want to find the force of the motor because we want to find what's the power of the motor. So I rearrange a bit. This will be M1G minus M2G, and I guess you could simplify a bit. M1 minus M2 in the bracket 
crime stew. We are done. Are we done? Wait. Nope. We're not trying to find the force. We're trying to find the power, right? Power of motor. This thing, remember? That's what we're trying to find. So power of the motor will be the force that it is exerting times the velocity of the system, the world, the elevator that is moving. So force of motor we had was thing up there. That would be m1 minus m2 g times the velocity that the elevator and all the other objects are moving. Hey, we already found the answer. <gasps> Very nice. So the answer is this. m1 minus m2 gv. Pretty cool, huh? You need to know what forces are acting now and what acceleration zero means. Okay, so I, before I close and end this video, I mentioned there's another method to do this, right? It's using energy. It may look a little longer, but I don't know. I'm going to show you both methods because why not? It's a learning experience, right? We're going to ex learn as much as we can from every single question. So another way to think of this, if you don't like forces and you're like, Miss, I don't know where to draw forces and it's just very scary. Okay, sure. Never mind, we don't need to draw forces. So method two here is thinking about conservation of energy. What are the energy changes that is happening in this whole system? You can create an equation. What are the energy gain, kind of gained, and what is the energy loss kind of thing? And you create an equation. So if you look at specifically the elevator, it is getting higher and higher, right? We focus on the elevator side. Huh? It's getting higher and higher. So that is called uh, increase in gravitational potential energy. So mgh, but also m1gh going up by some height. I don't care which height. I'll just, I'll just say it changed up to this height. Okay, so for the elevator. Uh, why is there an elevator energy gain? There has to be some kind of energy loss. So when you look at the system, energy loss means on the other side, this other thing is going down by a certain height. You know, like this, okay? Do some elevator motion with your hand. So you're going to have energy loss for that fella here, M2GH, go down by a height. What else? Don't forget the motor. The motor is cranking energy, crank, 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 doing work. It's losing energy, so you can include that on this side. Work done by motor. So I'll say work done by motor. Or the motor, if you want to speak American English, sure. So you need to find the rate of energy, so you divide everything by time. So what you have is M1GH. So this is the power now, because energy divided by time. This one divided by time. This one also divided by time. I'm just going to shortcut this. So the next step is, oh, how do you do this? M1 times G, height over time. That looks very familiar. You travel a certain distance in a certain time. That's what we call velocity. So you can just say MGV. Oh my, what happened to this? There we go. MGV. That's a velocity. Same thing here. They have the same velocity, so m2 gv plus work divided by time is power, so power of the motor. Do a bit of rearranging, very nice. So you have pm equals to m1 gv minus m2 gv, and if you factorize them, you get the answer. So m1 minus m2 times gv done you have the answer okay so that's the same conclusion here but two different methods so which one you actually use during exam really doesn't matter some people prefer forces it's a little shorter and working but you must know how to do the forces and newton's second law energy gain a little bit longer but if you prefer to use energy you can use this too okay so that is all for this question two methods to solve an elevator question Hopefully that was helpful. Any doubts, just comment below and you'll be fine. All right, that's all for this one. See you in the next video.